How's it going guys, Vlad here and in today's video we're going to be putting together a robot kit for the Arduino. So this is similar to the Redbot chassis that you can buy with SparkFun Electronics. It is a kit that comes with two motors, the chassis itself, a battery holder, a uh, uni wheel, has some encoder functionality and uh, I've received a uh, schematic diagram on how to put it together along with the kit. So I'm going to be going through the schematic and building the robot step by step. So in the subsequent tutorials, we're going to be mounting the Arduino on the robot. We're going to start programming different functionalities and then trying to expand on the platform, add uh, accelerometers, different sensors uh, and see where we can uh, build up. So yeah, let's start building the kit. So the first thing we want to do is put together the motors. I'm going to use two of these transparent wedges in order to hold the motor in place. So there's two holes that you need to align with the wedges and then you can insert the screws which will be used to hold that assembly together. So I'm going to insert both of them before tightening anything. So two screws like so and then there's going to be a nut on each one of the screws. So let me just tighten that really quick. I guess in this case, you need to tighten the screw instead. I'm going to leave it loose for now just so I can align them a bit better once uh, both the motors are mounted as well as the wheels. So for now, it's just going to stay um, as is. Just tighten it a little bit. No need to fully uh, close that motor. The second two wedges, I mean the next two wedges, are going to come in place like so. You will have your two screws once again. So screw number one and number two. And these kits, like I've mentioned, are extremely inexpensive. You can pick them up for something like um, 15 to $20. So highly recommend it if you're just starting out or if you're looking for a kit that you can just break and not care about too much perfect beginner skid before you move on to something uh, bigger and greater, so to speak. So let me get the second nut on there. It's, sometimes it's fairly challenging because they're not designed to have the optimal configuration. There we go. So the second motor is in place. Let's see what we got now. Um, we can mount the encoder wheels, but these, uh, I don't think I'm going to be making any, any use of them anytime soon. So these are used uh, together with a, so essentially if you can see it, the slotted wheel is going to rotate and you can mount a sensor which will look through them. So each time you look through a slot, you know that it's um, like however many slots, the 360 divided by the number of slots, uh, that's how fast your uh, motor has moved in radial terms, of course. Let me just quickly grab a screwdriver from my set so I can actually tighten those um, so I am going to tighten the motors a bit more because they're giving me some trouble. Okay. Okay, so that motor is all set. Just a small Phillips screwdriver. Okay. So we have both motors in place with the encoder wheels. 
like I said, I don't really plan on using that functionality right away. And um, actually, I think I've tightened it a bit too much and now it's, yeah, so. Move it out just a little bit, make sure that like the encoder wheel is actually positioned within that opening. So if you can't tell, I have a problem with the motor not sitting right because the encoder wheel is um, sitting on the acrylic. So obviously, like I keep saying, these kits are good, but they are not, um, they are not um, the best uh, on the market, so to speak. Let me just correct that. So both motors as well as the encoders are now mounted on the chassis. What else do we have? So um, <clears throat> you want to mount the wheel next. So this is gonna be used, um, it's gonna be tied through the standoff. So it's gonna be mounted. Let me just quickly orient myself. So it will require four of these little screws. So I'm using four screws on the top, then four standoffs. And then it's also going to have four screws underneath. So an assembly like so. Going to do that four times. Standoff number two. Paying attention to use the correct screws because some of them are actually smaller and I'm guessing that's for a different purpose. Um, standoff three. And the last one. Yeah, so I think that's a small screw that's used for something else. That's Yeah, so it's actually, it's not me going crazy. All of these screws are too small for this particular standoff. I don't know why, uh, but they sent me a um, one size larger standoff. I guess it's just going to have to hold on to the three other standoffs. And uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure the kid is still going to make it. But yeah, this is just not, uh, it's not going to do it. The screw doesn't hold in. I'll probably get a, I don't have any spares, but I'll probably have to buy a, uh, either a different standoff, find something in my kit, or um, just get a replacement part. So let's mount the wheel um, to our chassis. And before I lock it down, actually, so... Yeah, I just made a mistake. I need to rotate that 90 degrees so it's it's not um, it's not square, it's rectangular. So it's gonna go in there. Okay, that's one. And I mean, I would put the standoff in there anyway, but um, it's, the screws are gonna fall out if it's not uh, if it's not tight. So I'm just gonna leave it off for now. It's gonna be it's gonna be a three-legged robot, which should be fine for most applications until I start loading it up with uh, some weird battery packs. So this is what I'm working with. Same from the other side as well. So I'm using a screwdriver from each side just to give it a little more torque. Make sure the wheel is in place. There we go. 
Okay. So the wheel is now mounted. So this is a freely rotating front wheel. It's not going to do anything or back wheel if we want it to be. So next step, we will mount the wheels. So these are fairly simple. Just snap on wheels, carefully mount them. That's the first one. Just gotta make sure you orient it properly before you start forcing it in. That's wheel number two. So now we got a nice um, platform. And last but not least, we will, I guess we can mount the battery pack right now too, that's fine. So it is mounted over these holes. Let me just drop some screws in there. So it has two screws. Um, and this, as you can already see, it's going to be a six volt battery pack. From if you put on regular batteries or if you put uh, rechargeable batteries, it should go up to to what 5.1. So I think that's what they were aiming for. And um, so yeah, that's the kit with the battery pack. As I mentioned, I still have an extra standoff that I'm going to have to take care of. There's a lot of screws and nuts still remaining. We will uh, finalize the soldering in the next tutorial. So I have four leads for the motors. They don't come pre-soldered. And last but not least, I have a small toggle switch for on and off, uh, which we will also solder in place. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned. We're going to mount some sensors on this, mount the Arduino, and then start making some um, avoidance robots and uh, other cool things. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like the video if you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you would like to see with the robot. So the obvious thing is we're gonna have to build an age bridge. Um, but yeah, if you have something else in mind, if you would like me to use the accelerometer, for some sort of an application, please let me know in the comments below. And once again, yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye. It's the um, acclaimed RGB LED. So with the aid of an Android app, which is not created by me, I can connect to the Bluetooth module and very easily, um, for example, change the brightness of each color of the LED. So as you can see, I'm controlling the blue, the green and the red. I can also toggle all my digital pins. So as you can see, the LED on pin 13 of the Arduino can be toggled on and off. And obviously this offers you a lot of opportunity to create all kinds of uh, wireless gadgets. You can turn on and off your lights at home if you wish. You can control robots. Um, and another thing that I want to mention is this is extremely um, simple. Honestly, I thought there was going to be much more programming involved in order to get this running. But uh, there's a lot of there are a lot of apps available directly on the Android store as well as the uh, iOS store, which you can use directly with.